In this video, let's go through adding some objects to our cross sections, projecting some objects onto our cross sections. So a great example of when you might want to do that would be right away. It happens a lot on linear projects where you've got section views and you need to see the right of way in your section views. So how can we do that? There's really three primary ways that you can do it. And I'm gonna go through each one so that you can choose the one that is best for your project. So when it comes to right of way, you are dealing with really two things. You've either got a design right of way where you are developing where the right of way will be and you've got an existing right of way where you've got to make your project fit inside of it. Either way, you need to see them in your section view, or you might have the mix of where you need to see both. So if you're doing a design right of way where you are determining the right of way location as part of your design, it may be best if you have them dynamic, dynamically tied to your horizontal alignment. If you were going to put in, let's say in our case, a 100 foot right away, 50 feet to the left, 50 feet to the right, and it's a perfect offset of your center line, and you always want it to be a perfect offset from your center line, why not make it dynamic? And you may remember that one of the best ways to do that is utilizing offset alignments. So let's do that. Let's make some offset alignments. I'm going to select my alignment here, and we're going to create offset alignments. We're going to put right away at the beginning and the side for the name and 50 feet left and 50 feet right. I'm going to put it on the alignment style. Now, if you were wanting to generate these line works for plots, you may want to create you an alignment style that's for right away. So it's the right color and line weights and everything that you want. I'm going to leave it on offsets from, for the purposes of our video, but be aware that you can utilize these styles to help save you some time in drafting and with no labels. I'm going to hit OK here and zoom out and now I've got me a line to the left and to the right 50 feet. Now I said line but these are alignments. So we have alignments now and we want to see them in section view. Now the premise of section views are that they are these are 2D cuts along the z-axis of whatever you're sampling. So because they are along the z-axis, these lines have to have z-elevations or else they will just display off the section down at zero or above it. But if you want them to have the right-of-way showing your section view, they've got to fall in here. And most typically, they are tied to your topogra topographic survey line. So we want a right-of-way marker, this little block I've got here, on the topo at this location horizontally. So we've got to do a little bit of back-end stuff and if you don't have this done already in template you can do it at any time or you can build a new template. Like I said I've got this block and I want to use this block to show where the right-of-ways cross my sections. So first step is create you a block showing whatever you want. Now this block I made and it's the right size and the right scale and it's it's the way I want it to view. The second part is that we need to assign this block to a style. Now lines that cross a line that you are displaying in a section view comes in as a point or as a marker. So we come over our tool space, go to our settings under general and multi-purpose styles, you've got your marker styles. So we're going to come down, and I've already created a style called right-of-way. I'm going to open it so you can see. This is just like all the other right-of-way markers, or all of the other marker styles, excuse me. I named it right-of-way. I came down, and I went use a block, and I chose the block that we made, which is named right-of-way cross-section. And I set it to a fixed scale of 1 because I drew my block the way I want it. Depending on how you generate your blocks or how you're utilizing this, you can play with these settings. So now we've got a line, we've got a block, and we've got a style. We are ready to put them into our section views. Now utilizing um, alignments to do this, we've got to do one additional step. Now remember that an offset alignment, when I made it, 
when I made those settings, it will generate a profile of it that is whatever parameters that I put in when I created it for the vertical. Let me go through that real fast. So when you make the offset alignments, you have here these tabs, the widening and the offset. I didn't uncheck the create profile from offset because I did it in haste. So it offset it at a negative 2% and created a profile called Val Design left, right, is assigned to this alignment. Well, we don't care about the design for what we're doing. We need the topo. So in order to do that, we need to sample the topo along that line, which is what Civil 3D calls profiles. So I'm going to go up here and we're going to create a surface profile for each one of these alignments that is the topo. So I'm going to add it. I'm going to hit OK because sometimes it which is out, so I'm just going to add it, and then I'll right-click and repeat, and go to our right and sample this one, okay? And I don't really worry about this style right now because I'm not creating profile views. So I'm just cutting the profiles and storing them on the alignment. So if we come over here and we look at our alignments here, we've got offset alignments. You know how you can drill in, and I can see the profiles that have been cut for set alignment. Now that we've got the topo cut for it, we are now ready to put them into our cross sections. So I will select the section view and I'm going to go to the section or go to the view group properties. Under view group properties on the section views tab, we have profile grades. I'm going to click the button and open it. And now we can add these profile grades to our view group. And we're going to set them to the style that we made. OK, and OK, and OK again. And just that quick and easy, we've got profiles in here. Now, and I did that in haste and wrong so that you could see what's happening. So you see how these are just coming in at weird locations. Now, when I did that, you control Z to get, get them gone. So I wanted to do it wrong so that you would learn. We're going to go in here real quick and do it again. Profile grade. And add it. And add the left. Now. Right here is the profile that the line is using. So I need the topo. So let's choose the topo this time. I had the design chose the first time. Wanted to see you or let you see it wrong so that if you do this and you're like, what's going on? You'll know why. Now let's hit OK and OK. And boom, there they are, and they're right on the topo. Now, one of the primary benefits of doing it this way is that one, as we mentioned, is dynamically tied to your center line. Now, if your right away varies, you know, but in an engineered fashion, you still can do all the magic of offset alignments that we have in our other videos. You're able to add transitions and widenings and all that. So you can move this line around. It doesn't have to be a perfect offset the whole way but it's still dynamically tied to the center line. The other primary benefit is that because it's an alignment, we're able to cut a profile. And in the background, when you cut a profile, you saw that line in a profile view, which means that there is data for all the stations along the profile view, which means that there is a data point exactly at each section line. So you get a very exact drawing of them at each one of these whole stations, which is one of the main benefits. And you'll see why that's uh, important in the next method. One of the main cons of doing it this way is that I can't select this object. When I try to select it, it's part of the view, which means uh, I also don't have the ability to add a label style to it. Now, if you were doing right of way, markers knowing that you were going to need to maybe label an offset marker 
to the left and to the right, maybe you had varying right of ways and you needed to label it, this method won't work for you unless you manually place the label. We can't add automated label styles to it. But it was quick, it was easy, and it gets it in there, and um, it achieves what we were after. Now, our second method we're going to look at is an example of when maybe you don't have a design right-of-way, where you have a right-of-way that's bearing or an existing right-of-way that you've been given, but you still need to display it. And in that case, we're going to come in here and create us some lines to represent that. I'm just going to offset my center line 50 uh, to the left and 50 to the right, just so we can get some lines that work in here. And now I've got what may be, in your case, represented as lines to the right of way. And let's come over here and make it all ugly and, and variable. Right, to maybe whoops, to represent some existing right of way. Maybe it's very and it's all crazy and ugly. The surveyors have sent you some existing right of way, and it's just a nightmare. But you still need to show it, which in that case you'll have it as line work. So in this method, it's really two methods, and they're very similar, but we're going to go through them. The first one, or for both of them actually. We still have to assign Z's, Z elevations, to these lines we have. Now, if you got a 3D polyline, you're golden. But either way, we've got to get them on Z and to get them on the profile or into the section views. And the best way to do that is there's a feature line. So I'm going to come over here and create it from objects and make this a feature line. I'm going to put them on our own site just to be safe. I don't want them interacting with any features I might have in my design drawing. So I'm going to put them on a, their own special site and I'm going to call this one ROW Left. And I've already got me a feature line style called Right of Way. And what does that do? Let's look at it. So you do need to make sure, in this case, that you have your feature style, feature line style. And in our case, what matters is the section tab and that we choose that marker style for the section view of the feature. So if you're making it as a feature, make sure you have a style and that the style section calls our marker style that we have. So they're all built on top of each other. The marker style is plugged into the feature line style and the feature line style is going to be plugged into the section. So now we've got all that. I'm going to assign the elevations. I'm going to hit OK. And we are going to get our elevations from the topo surface. I am not going to insert intermediate grade breaks this first time so that you can see uh, a caveat of the design. So I'm going to hit OK. And now I've got a feature line. And if you know anything about feature lines, every PI is assigned an elevation and everything in between is a linear interpolation of the, uh, in between them. So the only points that are exactly at the topo are at the PIs. And you may already know what's fixing to happen. So now that I've got the feature, we are going to zoom in down here on our sections so I can see them. To get this onto our sections, under the Home tab, under Section Views, we're going to expand it and we're going to project multiple section views. So I'm going to do all of them. You could do just one. But I'm going to do multiple sections and ask you to choose either a sample line or a section view from your view group. And then you get this dialog box. You're able to choose multiple view groups, but if you did the picker, you got the one you want. And you can do the projection rules, either from a distance from the section line or by percentage. We want it only at the section line. So I'm going to pull this all the way over to zero. So that it's only going to show me at the section line. What this means is if that 3D object will actually project forward and back, which may be applicable for the types of objects you have, but not for right away. So we're going to pull it over to zero. And down here, you're able to choose what am I going to project. Well, we're only doing our feature lines. So I'm going to uncheck everything but feature lines. And these are your selection criteria. So you're able to choose a source layer, and you're able to choose the display. So we deliberately put them on a right away style. You can see if I click this, I can choose them. And I've only got that one object, so we're pretty good. 
Now I have to come over here to this button, which is the output. So let's click this. And in here, you're able to choose your marker and whether to draw it or not draw it. And notice that we have our labels. So this, we could sign labels if you want to. I'm going to change our marker style to our right of way style we made. I'm going to hit OK and OK. And there it is. And notice it's in here, but that is way off the topo. And this is way below the topo. And that is because we did not insert those intermediate grade breaks. Now, depending, uh, deliberately did it without it because you may be tempted to not insert grade breaks <coughs> because of your triangles, and it creates a lot of them. Um, so that you have to deal with that and choose whether that's going to be applicable. You could come in and manually place PIs at every one of these cross sections. Or you could just assign the elevations from the um, intermediate grade breaks. So let's come over here and let's do this one. So let's do feature line, feature line from objects, choose it, just rinse and repeat. We're going to do the exact same thing. Let's call this right of way right. Right of way style, assign elevations. This time I'm going to insert those intermediate grade breaks. And now we've got a whole lot more. Now, buyer beware, you know, point of warning. This line, these lines are where the sections are cut. If you notice, there's not PIs right at the section lines. So there is a chance that that line, when we go to market, will not be exactly on the topo because it is interpolated. And this solely depends on the complexity of your surface. If you had very large triangles that were 50, 100 feet apart triangles, they might be, even with the uh, applying grade breaks, you might end up with the same problem. Okay? Well, let's see what happens to us. So we're just going to repeat the same process here. So we're going to go to sections, multiple section views, choose this. Zero, zero, off, 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 off. All that's good. And we'll come over here. I've got both. I'm actually going to turn off the left because I've already done it. Choose our style. And OK and OK. And override if it's in there. And there we go. And now they're in there and they look pretty good. They're pretty dang hot. They're very close. But just wanted you to be aware that it might not be. That's pretty much it for this video. Just wanted you to see these two methods. This method could be applicable for your right of way. You can use these for this to project any objects that you want onto your cross sections. Um, I had a, a, a viewer that was asking how to do this for existing paint, paint on roadways. So you could have your line work from your survey that represents the existing white lines or existing rumble strips. And for whatever project you're doing, if you needed to annotate those in some way, you would you could do it this way. With the caveat that remember, um, offsets, you know, in that example, you more likely won't have an offset alignment because it's going to be varying. But you would not be able to add annotations to offset alignments or profile grades when you add them. So keep that in mind. You, found this helpful, please click like and feel free to subscribe.